Today we're telling a deeper story. You know what? It was going to be a completely different video today, but I'm just not in the mood, man. I a lot of things going on outside and I kind of want to get deep now. I kind of want to tell a deeper story, even though we're out nightlife and there's a lot of drunk people and I'll probably get some stupid people in my videos, but I'm kind of in a cranky mood and I want to just tell the story of my life. So that's what we're doing. And I think the artist in me wants to flow because I feel like a lot of my past videos have been a bit more unnatural where I am trying to force myself to flirt, trying to force myself to talk to people, do interviews when I don't feel like it. I want to start creating things more authentic. So that's what we're doing. How's that? What are you How's doing? that I going? What, what is this? It's just a GoPro. For what? For my YouTube channel. What is your channel about? I'm talking about uh, uh, how to get out of your comfort zone today. Okay, uh, I say, um, so, um, I'm... Alright, so it's funny because I don't even feel like doing interviews today. Hey, what's up? How are you? How are you? Good to see you. Good. Hey, let me get on the vlog again. Say what's up. What's up? Are you, are you with the squad? Is this the squad? Uh, you want to meet them? Not really. I'm, I gotta run this way anyways. <laughs> I'll see you. Funny. Funny that. I made out with her last week. Funny that. Anyways, boys. It's funny because I don't feel like being out here at all. But since I keep on coming out here, my social anxiety is kind of gone. And when people are walking up to the camera, I'm kind of like annoyed. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, people want to talk to me right now. But I have this like obnoxious looking setup. So it's very, today we're telling a story of how I became slightly charismatic. Now, I really don't see myself, I know I'm not the most charismatic guy in the world. I have my moments. I have a lot of great moments. I have a lot of not so great moments. And you know what? I'm gonna start posting all the not so great moments on YouTube shamelessly because I'm not fucking perfect and none of you guys are perfect either. So, that's what we're doing. All right, let's check the audio. I'm gonna check the audio, make sure it's good before I start ranting because I don't wanna rant for 20, 30 minutes and have the audio be shitty. So, that's what we're doing right now. First things first, <laughs> hello, how's it going? I grew up with a crazy childhood. I'm not gonna go in depth, maybe one day I will in a podcast long form video but today all I gotta say is I would say it's probably crazier than most I mean a lot of us had crazy childhoods I'm not trying to wear that like a badge of honor on my sleeve it's just reflecting when I really think about it I'm like yeah I kind of had a crazy childhood divorced parents just a lot of a lot of negative shit I'm yapping about um, how to get out of your comfort zone that's that's the first thing yeah yeah so yeah so we should go. Talk to strangers. Talk to strangers. Yeah. Are y'all sisters? No. No? What? I don't know. Y'all give me like the same energy, so that's that's why I said that. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Alright. I gotta think of better questions. Fuck, actually, I don't have to think of anything because I really don't care. Sure. What's the craziest shit you've seen out here? Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy? Just a bunch of, bunch of drunk people. Bunch of drunk people. That's why I'm out here. It makes the vlog more interesting. Hey, thank you guys. All right, so long story short, I had a pretty crazy upbringing. Um, I didn't have a role model. I didn't have a, anyone to teach me anything. Uh, dad wasn't in the life. You know, I hate telling the same story. It's like a cliche, typical story. A lot of abuse, I guess you could say, and that's, that's all I'm gonna leave it at. I really don't feel like elaborating more, and maybe one day. But long story short, because of this quote unquote crazy childhood, um, growing up, I was diagnosed with this thing called ADHD, which I now don't really believe in too much. Now, you might be thinking like, that's really dumb. Like, why would you even say that? All I'm saying is this, when you have a crazy environment, poor nutrition, lots of drama, lots of emotional spikes, bad emotional regulation, bad, bad environment, lots of um, uh, no guidance, no discipline, bad habits, you're just on a computer or a or um, you know TV all day, and then you go to class and you can't focus, and then you diagnose the kid. You say, "Oh, he has ADHD." What does that do to a kid's psychology? Now, I can tell you personally what it did to mine. It made me grow up from a very young age, thinking that there was something wrong with me. When in reality, there was nothing wrong with me. It was just my environment. So, instead of treating it like the issue that it is, which is an environmental issue. You pump up the kid with lots of medicine and it numbs him out. It turns him into a zombie. Probably, it probably makes him kind of uh, socially weird in class because you can't really talk. I remember it really messed me up. Gave me headaches. 
Um, I just would never talk. I was like really quiet afterwards. That combined with a lot of other crazy traumatic things, I grew up to be very, very awkward. That is the, the, the short story of everything. And I think that's as deep as I will go. And I wasn't bullied. That's the one thing I will say. I was never bullied because I was always willing to stand up for myself just because I was. Um, and there's that's something about human psychology that I've learned, by the way, is not able to fight, that's okay. Not willing to fight, that's not okay. As long as you're willing to fight and people can feel that you're gonna, you're gonna actually fight, even if you're gonna lose, they're gonna be like, don't fuck with that guy. He's just, he's just leave him be, he's gonna fight, you know? So that is a little pro tip for you guys. Um, yeah. All right. All right, so ages zero to 16, that was pretty much it. Um, I was really fat, I lost a lot of weight around 15. And then now, let's transition into adolescence, right? Adolescence, I grew up um, with a social circle. And the social circle that I chose were all the, the bad kids, I guess you could say. The kids that were doing drugs, kids selling drugs, going to parties, doing stuff like cocaine, weed. And I fell deep into that trap. And the reason why I call it a trap is because when you're growing up so sheltered, so awkward, and so in your head, and you've never had any experiences the minute that you get out of your head and you start to do something like like Molly and you go to music festivals and you jump up and down and you finally, finally, finally get out of your head for once, you get out of this crazy haze that you're living in, you're able to socialize even for a brief second, even if it was fueled by alcohol and drugs, it is a feeling that you will chase forever because you actually feel alive, you actually feel okay and it's actually like self-medicating. So adolescence, that's what I fell into, deep into the party scene, deep into the music festival scene. Was it good or no? That's actually the real question. Sometimes I have to ask myself, was it necessary? Because it did get me out of my shell. I started going to parties. I started talking to people. I started to become social, kind of. But the only problem is, oh, we got some more vloggers here. Check it. Hey man, this is this is my territory. <laughs> man, what the fuck? Yo, the only vloggers in all of our did I scare the girls away? No, we're from Austin, bro. What you doing from here? From Austin, Texas? Yeah. Dude, I'm just out here. This is my last day and last night in Arkansas before I moved to Thailand. And I was like, you know what? Let me make some videos. Yeah. You gotta you gotta be careful with the women in Thailand, you know. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know, trust me, I know. Hey, or maybe maybe that's your vibe, you know? Like I, I respect all people, you know, like accidentally like uh, uh uh and then you're like you see something dangling down it's like damn damn this shit got weird quick <laughs> i don't have any questions planned tonight okay we don't give a fuck i am so surprised i met some fellow vloggers here in arkansas i mean dude this is a good town to interview in is it okay to be so deep into the party scene. I kind of feel like it had to happen in some way because if it didn't, then I probably would have grew up very, very nerdy. But also at the same time, I went way too far with it. I did way too much. And that's why I'm so like strict with myself now because I feel like I've wasted so much of my life just wasting time, partying, and I kind of regret it. So a lot of my life, I would say from the age of 16 to 19 or maybe even 20 was spent only partying. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's just three or four years. Imagine partying five days a week for three or four years. Imagine how many substances you do in that short amount of time. Guys, that is probably the biggest regret I've ever had in my life. The second biggest regret was staying with my ex, one of my ex-girlfriends for a very long time because that's a waste of time as well. But did it get me more charismatic? Kind of. When I say kind of, it was in more of the way they were interacting with the, the girls back there. More of that arrogant, fake, bravado, confident way. More, it wasn't grounded. Does that make sense? Like, I became very loud, right? And loud at parties, but it was because of the alcohol and the substances I was on. So, it wasn't grounded in any core confidence. I didn't work on myself. And that was until I found a guy named Owen Cook. Owen Cook 
completely changed my life. And I started to do approaches and I started to approach five people a day. And the biggest catalyst for my change was not only that, but also breaking my leg. I broke my leg when I was 19 years old and it completely changed my life. It forced me to sit down in my home for about two, three months. And, and the way I broke it was the stupidest way possible. I'm not even gonna say it. It forced me to sit at home and really ask myself, why, what are you doing with your life? You need to get your life together. And it, it was the catalyst for me to start to stop doing substances, to stop drinking so much, and to start to change my life. I know, so many of us. You wanna have the mic? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Calissa. Calissa it's you're been real. You're a natural. I am a natural. You're a natural. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hey guys. Shout out to your friends. I'm too. literally my best friends are right behind me. Yeah. One's getting interviewed yeah. by another YouTuber and that's okay. So you guys are going to be famous. How old are you? I'm 20. Okay, cool. So would you advise people your age, I'm an old man, to, <laughs> <laughs> to not get into a relationship right now? Because I would. I would say wait till you're like 23 maybe. No. No? No. Okay. I would say get into a relationship because you learn a lot about yourself. Okay. You do. You, do. you can't. No, you, do. you can't. You, you can't deny. You do learn about a lot about yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. What was you your name again? Callista. Callista. Nico. Nice to meet you. I'm gonna do a loop around, but I'll be back. <laughs> okay. I have a lot to say. You do. I love it. Amazing. How are you doing? Good, my man. Good. How are you? I got a new setup. I don't know if you see it. Check it out. Hello, how you doing my guys? This is all the good people in the world. We're trying to do good things with lives. Hell yeah. What? Epic, bro. And we got the dog here. He's chilling. Hey, buddy. Very nice dog. Hello. Hey, man. Have a good night, bro. I'll be back. Thank you, brother. All right, so I forget what we were talking about. I'm starting to warm up, though. I'm starting to get out of my head. All it takes is a couple interactions. As you guys know, if you've been watching my videos. So, guys, I broke my leg in college. Now, you might be thinking, how did that change your life? Well, guess what? I, hard to party when you broke your leg. Also, the way I broke it was so embarrassing. I'll, I'll just tell you. I was car surfing. I was literally car surfing. What's up, man? And, um, and I broke my leg. And I had about three months of agonizing pain. And, sh and not only pain, but shame. Like, what am I doing with my life? How did I get to this point where I broke my fucking leg? And those three months, all I did was study, push-ups, drink water and rehabilitate my leg and when I came back I came back 10 times more disciplined more strong and it completely changed my life it was the first time that I really started to dial in my my routine I woke up every day at 7 a.m. I ate really fucking healthy I lost like 20 30 pounds my brain fog my brain fog cleared up and for the first time I started approaching I approached five girls a day and at the same exact time I found the self-improvement content I found this guy named Owen Cook who talked all about social dynamics. I became absolutely obsessed. I studied for two, three, sometimes even four hours a day. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and I started to open up my mind, but not through drugs, not through alcohol, in a more natural way. And that changed my life, man. And that was the catalyst for change. So I found self-improvement. And that's why I'm such a big self-improvement person because without it, I feel like I would still be kind of in my shell. I would still be the guy partying or, or stuck in bad habits so I'm thankful that I broke my leg but I'm also thankful for Owen Cook and that's why I really am passionate about the content that I make so that was the catalyst for change five approaches a day now I did get into a relationship for three years after I got my shit together which I highly advise against especially when you're still improving on your journey because it can potentially stunt your growth you have to find a good partner you can't rush into that thing like I did that's a an, that's another story I have a whole video about that so We'll talk about that in another story. So, I'm uh, just making a YouTube video. Yes, sir. I'll be back. I'll be back. Um, they didn't seem like very fun. Now, the next three years were what I want to call <laughs> climbing out of a pit. Yep. <laughs> you look like you want to be in my video. The way you just looked at me, you were like, "Oh, really?" I'd be out here a lot. Are y'all having a good night? Okay. So, the next three years were what I want to call climbing out. Say what's up. What's going on? Yeehaw, baby. <laughs> All right. Um, 
See, I'm not I'm not white enough to be saying that. Um, hanging on by a thread, guys. I've been balancing a full-time job, getting ready for Thailand, doing the YouTube shit. So it's been crazy, but I made it, man. And, I, and, and now that I'm here, it's actually not that bad. It's not that hard. So the hardest part is getting out here. So the next three or four years after I found self-improvement, I didn't just change immediately. And I think a lot of guys actually go through this where you find it and you, and you, you start to do good for a little bit, but then you bounce back and you, you fall into your old habits and it becomes this cycle. And I'm, I know you resonate with this where you're constantly falling back into your old habits. You become very ashamed of yourself. You do really good. You become really structured and disciplined and hard on yourself. And then you fall back into your old habits and it becomes this massive cycle. I probably was in this cycle for about three or four years. This shame cycle where I was still trying to fix my mind. I still had a decent level of brain fog. I still was surrounded. And this is the key here, guys. I was still surrounded by my old friends who are all doing drugs, who are not on self-improvement. So it became literally like a two or three year cycle of bad habits, still partying, still hanging around the same friends who are still doing drugs, who are not on self-improvement. And at the same time, I was trying to better my life. I was basically trying to live two different lives. I was trying to be this party person who was partying all the time. And at the same time, I was trying to change my life and be healthy and do all these awesome things. So it wasn't until I left home that I was able to break those bad habits. And that happened when I started traveling. I think a big reason why a lot of people love travel is because it gets you out of your comfort zone to the point where you're able to literally change your identity and become a new person. And that is what happened to me. So, you know what? I'm done with this place, guys. I'm about to move on to a quiet area and finish this vlog. I am exhausted. I don't feel like talking to nobody. I even I don't even feel like talking to girls. I'm burnt the fuck out, but I still made it out here and that's all that matters. So, let's finish this story out somewhere else. Lauren, it's her birthday today. It is. <laughs> Happy birthday. So why are you guys on the outside and she's on the inside? Well, we just got here, so we're trying to get her to come outside. Oh, uh, okay. And she's just like, "Nah, we're we're that's cool. Yeah, she's like, no, y'all have to come in here. I got you. But we're trying to go down here. That's a predicament. That's a predicament. Well, good luck. Best of luck to y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice All right, so it wasn't until I started traveling that I was able to really make a change in myself internally. Now, what I realized is when you're stuck with the same friends you've been around your entire life, it's easy to stay with the same habits. It's easy for them to treat you the same way. and it's very hard to keep yourself accountable when everyone around you is still doing drugs. So it became this massive spiral when I was getting into self-improvement, I was trying to approach, I was trying to study, I was trying to put my friends on it and I was making money, I started my own business. Everybody was still selling weed, selling drugs, doing drugs and I was stuck in this environment where I was the odd person out who was not trying to do it. But inevitably being around this environment, I would slip up and I just wanna also mention that these are the same friends that I grew up with, the same friends who got me out of my head in high school, the same friends who I considered to be family because I didn't have any other family in Arkansas. These were my family. So it, was, it wasn't like I could just get up and leave and, and th these were, I, I identified with the group that I was in. They were my brothers and you know, I still have some love for them but what I quickly realized was there was no way I could continue to be their friends. I was trying to shove a square peg into a triangle hole. I, I, I was trying to live a life that didn't fit with everybody I was hanging around with and it just made me feel crazy. And the moment that I realized that I was not meant to be with the same group was when I started traveling. I realized that for the mo majority of my life, when I was hanging out with these old friends, I was putting on a front. I was acting like someone I wasn't and I was trying to just fit into a group that I wasn't supposed to be fit, fitted in with. So, say what's up. Well, what's up, man? What, uh, what's up, bro? What's it about? What's it about? Uh, man, I'm doing, I'm doing a little storytelling, just telling my vlog about my life. I know it's a weird, weird environment to do it in, but. No, 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 uh, no, no. You know, just, just doing what's your name? hustling. I'm Nico, man. Nice to meet you. Hey, yo. Fuck with my man, Nico, guys. Yeah, fuck it. with Nico, buddy. Hey, I'm Tay. Oh, me. Okay, nice I'm trending. Trenton, nice to meet nice you, Nice to meet you, bro. Hey, y'all have a good night tonight. Y'all have fun. Talk to him real quick. You can say say a couple words. What's up, man? Hey, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all be nice to my man Nico, bro. Thank you, man. 
All right, young friend. Hey, y'all good vibes, man. Take care. So, you know what? My And my friends were like that, man. My old friends were, were not bad people. They were good people, man. They were cool as fuck, and I loved them to death. And I still... I, I, I wish I would have bounced from that group sooner because it was actually this weird period, like one or two years, where I was trying to change them and I was trying to be different while in the same group. And I feel like those one or two years kind of put a wedge between me and my friends. I, I feel like if I would have just accepted the fact that I was no longer meant to be hanging out with them anymore and just fucking bounced, it probably would have helped our relationship a lot more. Hey, What's up, guys? Good luck to you, Thank you, my man. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, everyone's hella nice out here. What the heck? So it's crazy. So that's pretty much it, man. Um, it wasn't until I started traveling that I was able to break out of that that environment and really, I guess you could say, it's the most cheesy thing you could say, which is find yourself. But it was really when I started to break out of my old identity and start to break old habits. And I remember coming back to my old friend group after leaving for about a year and I literally could not stay with them anymore. Like I couldn't interact with anyone. I realized that I had been playing a character. I've been putting on a front my entire fucking life, as crazy as that might sound. So I finally came back and I could tell that I was ready to move on. And that's when I decided to move to Florida. I drove to Florida, 13 hours. No, I just telling a little story, man. Say what's up, say what's up. I love everybody here. Hell yeah, that's go. the gang. Hey. Good vibes. Say hi. How's it going? Hey everyone. Whoa. <laughs> y'all are y'all seem very positive. Yeah, we're, we're very always positive. positive. Always positive. Have a great night. So I'm getting a lot of good vibes around here, which is really interesting because I'm in such a shitty mood. <laughs> well, they're making my video interesting. Thank you everyone who decided to show up to this video. So after traveling, I decided, you know what, I can't stay in Arkansas, and I moved to Florida. And that's where I met a guy named Italo who completely changed my life. He was a positive role model. He had his shit together. He ran businesses. He wasn't ne necessarily on self-improvement, but he was what I would call a natural. Like he had a good, a good upbringing. He had good social skills and he was just fucking positive. Guys, if you want one pro tip in life, just be positive, man. If you could just be positive, you're going to get very far in life. That's really that simple. So we lived together for about a year. He completely changed my life. And he taught me what it meant to be like a really upstanding, positive, sociable guy. And I was able to get like a really quality girlfriend at the time. I, I often talk about this time in my life, I have a video about it, how it was the best year of my life. And it really taught me that when you surround yourself with good people, you start to take on their traits, you start to take on their habits, and you start to become more like that person. So you wanna, sur we all know that you are the, the some of the five people you surround yourself with but it really didn't register with me until I moved out of Arkansas and met that person. The second person that I met in my life was a guy named Vince, and he was basically the guy, it was when I was living in Dallas, who convinced me that, hey Danny, you're actually really fucking smart. If you just pursue your goals and try hard, you will get far, you will go really far. So he's the one who, you could say, give, gave me self-belief. So those are the two people in my life who completely changed my life, Vince and Italo. Shout out to those guys. One was Brazilian, one was Italian. Now. We're gonna fast forward a bit here, but I feel like I've been yapping about here and on this park bench very awkwardly. So I think I wanna make things interesting again and just uh, get out of this environment. So I'm gonna walk around a bit. Okay, let them know that that was me. Okay, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, I'm from Arkansas. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. So what do you vlog about? Uh, what do I vlog about? Dude, I just do interviews. You interview? Yeah, I do interviews. Okay, so. hell yeah. What's the hey, new interviews about? I just talked about anything. Are you talking to girls and shit? Are you trying yeah, to pick man. up girls? Pretty much. Hey, fuck yeah, man. Hey, yeah. hey have a good night. Dog. Have a good night. Hey, hey welcome hey, back. Guys, y'all remember me? I, yes. Ask me another question. I okay, what's the worst approach a guy has ever done to you? Like, he tried to flirt, but no, it didn't work. Like buying me a drink and asking me what my Snapchat is. That's just like random out of pocket. What's yeah, your Snapchat? Out of pocket. What's and like, question? don't ask a girl for a Snapchat, ask for a number. Yeah. What's the question? What's like the worst uh, flirt that a guy has ever done? Like the worst approach, he's trying to talk to you and it just did not work out. Like you were like, nah, that's weird. Worst approach that I've ever gotten was just like, just a basic, no, just like a basic approach. It's like, yeah. you know, if you 
or like how... what if he what if he says hey what's up i thought you were cute is that like a normal basic approach that's a normal basic approach but it's like if you want something a little bit more it's like okay add a little bit more to your you know okay persona. can i can i pretend i'm just approaching you for the first time wait let me record, let me record. okay right. sounds good you, guys. you got it yeah All right. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I just wanted to say, I love your vibe. Where are you from? Are you from Arkansas? That's perfect. Is that good? No, be honest. You can rate it out of 10. You can give it an honest it's review. A one out of 10. One out of 10. Give me, give me an honest toxicity. review. She likes toxicity. She likes toxicity. I do like toxicity. Okay, was it, give that, rate that one out of 10, my approach. I think that was good because then it gives, you know, the conversation of, you know, wanting to understand more about the person and, you know, their values, their morals, and it gives more to the... Not just like, oh, come back to mine at fucking yeah. 1099 South whatever loop. All right, like, I'm going to do another approach. I'm going to do a bad one. Do another, do another. Do a bad one. Shit, what's up, girl? What's your name? Hey, you fine as hell. Hey. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. I would never flip someone off, but if that approach came, I'd be like, This is wild. I'm exhausted. I don't even know why I'm out here to be honest, but I just made it out. So to yourself that you are worthy. Sorry, Nico. Oh, Ted, you scared the shit out of me. Do you I remember me? Of course I remember you, babe. What the fuck? What's my name? <laughs> What's my? <laughs> oh my god! I interview hundreds of people a week. Just saying. You didn't interview me. We went on a date. Oh shit! Yes, I remember you. It was like the when I first moved to Fayetteville. Yeah. What's up? What's my name? I don't remember. I just literally forgot. How are you? Oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. It I'm is not, embarrassing. I'm not as good. Life is 180 oh also, since then, like I promise. To, it's hard to know. Like, it, you, you scared the hell out of me. Some guy just tried to fight me earlier. Really? So I thought that was the guy for a sec. I was like, really? oh shit, he's back. Yeah. No, it's me. Hi. I don't have to fight you because you don't remember my name. I know. Name. Well, I'm sorry. Things doing? didn't really work out on that day, did it? Is this, is this, this the is vlog? On. Yeah, this is the vlog. What are you doing? Is it live? Yeah. He doesn't really? remember my name. I don't. It's live. <laughs> you scared we the shit out of scary. me. We went on a date. No, it's not live. No, no. It's, it's, oh my it's, gosh. He doesn't remember my name. Yeah. What are you doing right yeah, now? Yeah, but What's you know what? I'm not going to I'm moving to Thailand. I'm moving to Thailand in two days. So Again? This is, hey, yeah, I'm going back. It off. It off. No, no, no. It's on. It's on. Am I going to be on the YouTube? If you want to be on it, you're more than welcome. What are you doing? You are going to be on it. Yeah. Hey, love. What are you doing right now? Wait, wait, wait. I'm shooting a video. About what? Um, so I'm asking people, what's the worst approach a guy has ever done to you ever? Um, like the worst time I would say, I would say the guy who came up to me in Puritan asking who, where, <laughs> where the plugins were. Is that what I asked you? <laughs> yeah. That was a real question. Yeah. yeah. You did the, that? That's probably that a fake one. Yeah. yeah. I probably knew you where need to put that in the vlog. So this guy, he came up to me in Puritan and he said, are there any uh, like plugins for like my computer? My computer's about to so die. I was like, your eyes. I was like, I don't know. Like, I think there's like a plugin over there, but there's like someone there. And then once they left, I was like, hey, this person's leaving. You should go plug in your computer. He's like, oh, thank you so much. Like my computer's at seventy percent. Damn, was it actually at seventy? Yeah. Damn. So talking? I think I just wanted to talk to you. you I think cute. you did. I think so. I think you knew that too, though. Yeah, I did give you my number. Where are you from? But Where are you from? I'm from here. Really? From Arkansas. What's your ethnicity? Guess. You kind of are giving like Italian. Wow, you got one of them. And like. Guys, what the heck? Tonight's been so random, bro. I'm at 10%. Oh my God. What the heck's going on? Well, at least now you know I'm going on dates, even though I, f I definitely fumbled that one. <laughs> that was like when I first came to Fayetteville. Um, it was a very awkward date. Say hi. Yep. Wow. Guys, she literally scared the fucking crap out of me. Did you see the guy being weird earlier? My God, let's see if we can finish this video. I can't believe I did this, guys. I really can't believe it. I really can't believe it. So, guys, after meeting my really great Brazilian friend, Italo, who completely changed my life and showed me what it was like to have a, a positive role model in my life and a good dude. He's like my older brother. He's way older than me, ran several businesses. I then moved to Dallas and moved back in with some old buddies who, I don't wanna say anything bad. I'm just gonna say, how's your night going? It's okay. Why is it just okay? I have a question for you. What's your question? 
Would you rather fuck a 70 year old and earn $4,000 or fuck a 20 year old and lose 400? How hot is the 20 year old? No answer. I would have to go with the 70 year old because then I'm going to be making money. Second question. Yes. If you could shoot a, ten, a different liquid out of each one of your fingers, what a would your 10? A different liquid out of each one of your fingers. What would the liquids be? Ten? I have to choose ten, ten liquids? Yeah. Jesus, that's a lot of liquids. I got mine. All right, well, ten. tequila, because what if you want to party, right? Yeah. Okay, so tequila was one. You want to hear mine? Sure. Right. It's, it's recording, by the way, so. You want to hear mine? Yeah, let me hear yours. Water, tequila, vodka, Diet Dr. Pepper, Cherry Coke, um, Red Bull, iced coffee, gasoline. Gasoline? Chick-fil-A Ranch. chick fil <laughs> Yo, oh, my last wild. one. I forgot it. I forgot it. No, Wait, no, it's, it's um, my last one. Sauvignon Blanc. That's a good list. You really thought about this. You. You, you were waiting for this moment for a long time. I asked for like time. three days. Asking everyone and I know. Now you're going to go viral on TikTok. Shit. Water, tequila, um, Coke, um, Fanta. Damn, I'm boring. I don't have Coke's anything else. Liquid. Coke's a liquid. You said gasoline. Come on. If you said gasoline, I could say Coke. Um... Red Bull, Red Bull. I can't believe I haven't said this yet, but coffee. A lot of coffee. Let's make, make that the last, the rest of it just coffee. I need a lot of coffee. I'm a caffeinist for closers. And my my camera's about to die. I'm very surprised I made it this far. I was not even trying to come out. All right, boys. So my camera just died. I really feel like I left it all out on these streets. I didn't even want to come, and I still made it. So here's the main premise and the main lesson of this video and it's this i'm going to sit down back in my little awkward spot and deliver the main point of this video this was an interesting night today boys a very interesting night oh back in with an old friend i fell back into old habits and i basically lost purpose of my life i lost purpose of my dreams i didn't really know what i was doing i just went through one of the worst breakups i've ever been through i was depressed um i was just chasing women i knew how to approach i was good at it but it was deeply unfulfilling because i had no real goals or no real direction and i was just bartending and during this year of my life it taught me one very valuable lesson and it is the main lesson that i want you guys to learn from this story chasing fun chasing pleasure chasing degeneracy i know i'm in a bit of a degenerate environment here is the ultimate way to live a terrible life you, what you want to chase instead is growth achievement and bettering yourself you want to get high not on drugs but on the feeling of accomplishment and doing what you know you're supposed to do i felt terrible before shooting this video and now i'm out here i'm about to finish and i feel like i'm on top of the world again i feel like i deserve to go home, get some good rest, and continue an amazing, productive day tomorrow. What I've learned is the fruit of life, the, the drinking, the going out with friends, the chasing girls, having sex, doing all these crazy, fun, degenerate things mean nothing. They mean nothing without pushing yourself past your comfort zone and doing what you're supposed to do and chasing your goals and having a direction. That is the most important thing in life. So. I moved back in with an old friend and again, he was nothing against him. We just weren't on the same wavelength and I kind of felt like I was brought back down. And after living with him, I fell into the massive rut and I was just going through one of the worst breakups, heartbroken. I lost direction and that was until I met another mentor of mine, another friend. His name was Vince and he was someone who basically instilled in me self-belief to chase my dreams again. And now that I'm doing YouTube and I'm chasing my dreams, I'm about to move to Thailand and really full send it. I am going forward, not chasing pleasure anymore. I don't care about sex. Yes, I'll be talking to girls with the sole purpose of getting better at talking and charisma. Yes, I'll be traveling with the sole purpose of making epic videos and creating a legacy of videos that are gonna change lives. Yes, I'm gonna be trying new things and trying new food, but I'm going to do it in a very structured way. I'm going to be riding my, my fucking motorcycle in the mountains of Chiang Mai after shooting in Australia for three weeks straight, grinding my fucking face off, making the best videos that I can possibly make and enjoy every second of it. What I learned and what I want you guys 
to learn from this video is take joy in the action itself and not the pleasures of life. Take joy in taking action. All right, guys, I hope this was a good video. That's the quick story of how I became slightly charismatic from extremely socially awkward. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick video and I will see you guys in the next one. My camera's dead. I'm literally about to go home. I gave it, I left it all on the fucking table, boys. I left it all on the field out there. I didn't even feel like coming. I move in two days and I'm just, I'm ready to start this new fucking life. I'm ready to get out of Arkansas and leave it all behind, guys, and start a new life. And I'm taking you motherfuckers with me. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.